Hi, welcome to my channel. Plastics are awesome, not from an ecological perspective, yet it has massive utility and is relatively cheap to produce, hence they are everywhere. Most of us are familiar with macroplastics. These are your water bottles, plastic bags, gadgets, and many more. But what about microplastics? Microplastics are pieces of plastic that are less than 5 millimeters in size. Here is a statement. In our age, it's practically impossible to avoid these microplastics. There is tons of scientific data that shows how these microplastics pollute the ocean and ruin the marine ecosystem. And to a lesser extent, they also have a negative impact on human health. With nanoplastics, however, the game is about to change for the worse. Our struggle with plastic disposal is going to take an ugly turn and this time around, the war is going to be fought inside the body at a cellular level. I believe even if we win the war, there is going to be collateral damage, life altering stuff. Watch till the end and you'll have a fairly good idea where this is all going. Bakelite, a synthetic resin trademarked in 1907 by Belgium born American chemist Leo Hendrik Bakeland. This was a major breakthrough and marked a significant advancement in the world of plastics. Unlike earlier materials, based on modified, naturally occurring stuff, Bakelite was the first truly synthetic resin, meaning 100% man-made through chemical synthesis. Such a thing did not exist before. It was created by combining phenol and formaldehyde, both derived from coal tar and wood alcohol at that time. By 1910, the production and demand for this synthetic plastic grew steadily and the parent company sought expansion into other countries. The year 1910. Keep this in mind. I'll let you know why this is important when we revisit this topic. Back to microplastics. They are classified into two kinds, primary and secondary. Primary microplastics are tiny pieces of plastics, purposely manufactured to be small fragments. A microfiber used in clothing is a good example of this type of plastic, and they alone constitute more than 30% of all the plastic pollution in the oceans. Secondary microplastics are formed from natural degradation of all the plastics. Look at this from this perspective. We are actively producing microplastics in the form of primary microplastics, and add in all other plastics that are already present in the environment as I speak. They too will be converted to secondary microplastics in some time in the future. So why should we care about this two-pronged attack on the environment that is not going to stop any time in the near future? You see, plastics and their disastrous impact on the oceans and marine life is well known. That's old news. However, microplastics have been found in soil and even the very air we breathe. There is a journal paper that says each of us are ingesting over 1000 microplastics per year, mainly from salt. Imagine unconsciously ingesting microfibers used in clothing or plastic bottles laden with chemicals, because that is what is happening. The amount ingested is very tiny, but over the years, it all can add up. Some of the ill effects of these on our health are disruptions to hormones, reproductive health, and an increased risk of cancer and insulin resistance. I should point out though, none of this has been substantiated with significant scientific evidence. Let's just say people are working on it. But all of them agree, plastics don't belong in the environment. Alright, what about the war at a cellular level, the collateral damage and the life altering stuff that you talked about in the intro? The stuff you just discussed doesn't correlate much with any of that. Enter nanoplastics. As we discussed, microplastics are 5 millimeters in size, about the same size as some tiny kidney stones, meaning you can actually see them with your naked eye. Nanoplastics are measured in micrometers and 1000 micrometers make 1 millimeter. The classic textbook definition of nanoplastics are plastic fragments less than 1 micrometers in size. Let me repeat that. Plastic fragments less than 1 micrometer in size. For perspective, an average human cell is 20 to 30 micrometers in size. Nanoplastics are confirmed to be present in the nature. Yet there is not much data which shows the interaction between human body and these plastics. Although because of their small size, 
nanoplastics should be considered as an extreme threat to all life. One of the scary things about these nanoplastics is their ability to cross the cell wall and reach their inner compartments. I wasn't much concerned when I first read about this because we all know plastics are very inert by nature and don't initiate chemical reactions that easily. That was until I learned these nanoplastics can mimic certain parts of the cell membrane and be taken up as part of the cell. What a shocker. There is a journal paper that studied zebrafish and found nanoparticles in its brain, pancreas and many other organs. And guess what? These nanoplastics changed the way zebrafish would behave under stressful conditions. So as of now, we have some evidence that these nanoplastics can not only penetrate the cellular layers of the skin, but can also make changes to various chemical reactions inside it. I'm talking about the zebrafish. Remember, the year 1910. This was when we started pumping plastics into the environment. It's been over 100 years and the process still continues. One of the major advantages or disadvantages of plastics is that its chemical degradation takes hundreds if not thousands of years. There is a good chance the very first created synthetic batch of plastics, the backlight, is still present in the environment as secondary microplastics or nanoplastics. And for the future, they just might camp in our cells and become part of us. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching.